Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Yvonne, and today I'll be talking or doing the editing breakdown about Christian Yu, also known as DPR Ian's Eyes of DPR visual film that released a month ago. There are a few things I do want to say before I get started, but you can always skip ahead because this is YouTube. Um, I was really surprised that there were no tutorials on how to edit like because usually when there's a new style emerging, people will just flock to that because people want views. Um, and I was surprised on YouTube to find that, wow, no one's creating tutorials about this guy. So I thought, might as well be me. So here I am, we're doing this. Secondly, I want to tell you, don't blatantly copy the effects, copy, um, copy the effects used uh, by Christian. I'm going to teach you how to do them, but if everyone just copies a style, it becomes oversaturated and it ruins the art of filmmaking because filmmaking is an art. So add your own creativity to it, make it better than what Christian's doing. That's what, that's what the artist intends. Um, not just slavish replication. That's not art. Okay, thirdly is there are a lot of effects within this video. Also, if you haven't watched the video, go watch that first. I'm not sure why you're here or how you even found this, but watch that first. Link is in the description, probably the first link. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so there's a lot of effects in that video that I want to talk about. And for the purposes of this video and the length, I will only briefly go overview um, each one, but check the timestamps if you're looking for, uh, for a specific effect so that you can find um, what it is, uh, where it is instead of watching the whole video. Let's see, what else? Okay, Christian Yu edits in After Adobe After Effects, no, Adobe Premiere. So that's what I'll be creating this tutorial on. Keep that in mind. Um, and with that said, let's get into it. All right, so the first, text, the first effect I want to talk about is the text effect shown at the beginning. Um, this is basically, uh, so I'm working on sample footage, just so you guys know, and it's an effect where the text color interacts with the backgrounds, and it looks really cool, and he uses it multiple times uh, within the video and even to market the video on social media. So I created my own, um, and it's really easy to do within After Effects. So this is an example of what it looks like. And as you can see, it looks, it does look pretty good. Um, it also matters what kind of footage you have. So just try to get the best footage, but it will work nonetheless. So this is how you do it. You want to open up your After Effects, assuming you're already in. You go to Later, you go to New, you go to Text. And I'm just writing that to the top so it shows. And then enter whatever your text is. So I will just, for the sake of this, is Eyes DPR. Um, eyes of DPR and position it how you like it using the position tool and um, color it however you want. For He keeps it yellow, so I'll keep it yellow. He also keeps it capitalized. I think it looks a lot better to capitalize. This is, by itself, it's already a very aesthetically pleasing text, but this is just to make it a little bit um, more interesting. So then I go to mode and then I go to difference. And voila, that's how you do it. That's how you do the effect. It's really simple and it, it's amazing what it looks like because um, it interacts with the text. So as you can see, even as a trend, if I jump cut into that next um, clip, the text changes completely and it looks really cool. And right around the building where the color changes, that's where you see um, the effect taking place. So, yeah, there's not, there's not really too much to say. Um, that's how you do it. And another important thing is that you can change the colors. So, but you do that by changing the original color of the text. So let's just take off the effect really quickly, put it back to normal. Also, by the way, if you don't have this little panel right here where it says mode and then um, this list of settings down here, all you get to press is toggle switches slash modes. And that will just make it so you can um, play the other settings. So, I mean, just keep that in mind if you don't have it. Then go to difference. Once, or let's go back to normal. Let's change the text color to white. Okay. And there's another thing I want to point out. Okay. So with this clip, you can see that there's kind of a white bottom, a white like floor. So if you had a white text over it, it makes it hard to read. I can't really read this. 
And that's another great thing where this effect comes in that might not have been highlighted in Christian's video. It makes it so text that normally wouldn't be readable if you wanted a certain color to be readable within all contexts. So, so I made it white and um, changed it to difference. And as you can see now, it's, it's much more readable. And it's very, it's just a very aesthetic effect to be quite honest with you. Um, and that's how you change the color too. So I think that's enough of that. On to the next effect, which is Data Mosh. Okay, so this appeared briefly within the video. It's just a little glitchy effect. To be honest with you, I didn't think it was the coolest thing, but I felt obligated to mention it here. Basically, you can achieve this effect in After Effects um, without a third party plugin that you have to pay, I think it's like $200 for. I didn't do that. Um, the only other way to achieve that is within a separate program. And um, you can search You can search that up. Just search, type into your YouTube, uh, how to do data moshing. If you really want to do this effect, how to do data moshing. And there's a tutorial by Justin Odishio, I'm pretty sure. Let me check on that. Justin Odishio data mosh. Right, so how to data mosh. As it's on Mob, yeah, you can eat high music video. And yeah, you're using a different program, Avidemux, uh, Avidemux, Avidemux. Okay, yeah, so you're using that. Um, can't choose it with After Effects without paying for it, but that's basically that. You know what you're looking for now? On to the next. If you want. The next effect is very cool. It is what we see, and it's called, so we see um, in Christian's video, and it's called, when he's like turning the motorcycle in the beginning, you see this little sphere um, of of what looks like bluish particles floating around and then dissolving into the air, and also the particles in the background. So that's called Plexus. What Plexus is? It's also third-party plugin that you have to purchase. I didn't personally because the internet is amazing, but. Um, yeah, you don't need to purchase it. That's one thing to keep in mind. And it's a line render. So what it does is it creates just cool lines. We'll talk, there's a lot you can do with it, but that's the basis of it. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. So that's what Christian does in creating this little sphere. So how do we do that? Okay, assuming that you already have the plugin Plexus, let's go to layer, new, solid. Um, we'll just call it Plexus lines. And then we go to our effects and presets and enter plexus. We drag that on and there we have it. Um, we don't actually have anything though. There's nothing here, it's just black. Okay, so what we need to do is, if we wanna create a sphere like um, Ian does, let's go to add effector or let's go to um, add geometry and put primitive. So it gives us a little cube as our primitive um, object. Let's change it into a sphere by just going to the primitive type, going to sphere, and here we have a, a sphere. Uh, it's a little bit too large for me, so I'm gonna change the radius. You can scale up and down the radius. Here you can play with the sphere slices, the stacks. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I think it looks fine. Um, all right, so that's, that's that. Actually, here, where is... If you want to make it dissolve like Christian does, so I'm assuming everyone here knows what a keyframe is. I'm, a, I'm assuming a basic understanding of After Effects. But if you don't, um, you would hit the keyframe button um, at the beginning of your clip. So, and then I'll move for three seconds, I'd say, and then put the sphere radius to, I don't know, 500. And that's how we create a zooming in into the sphere effect and it becomes separated more and more. So that's one aspect of Plexus. So you can create these particles out of sphere, or these spheres out of particles, but that's just one aspect um, that he uses it for specifically. But let's add a renderer. So that's how we create the lines in Plexus, the connecting lines. Um, so we go to add renderer and then go to lines. And this is where things can get really interesting. Um, so let's assume that we're already pretty spread, okay. What did I actually do here? Because I did this before and I was just pointing out that, okay. 
all types of things that you can do with your with your sphere with your um, object. Um, you can go to transform and you can change the positioning, change the rotate, change the. Oh, sorry. You can go to transform. You can change the positioning, the rotation, the y rotation, all sorts of stuff. Um, keep that in mind. But what we're interested in is so we have we want to create like these lines through space. How do we do that? So this is what our final product looks like that we can create. And as you can see, it's just lines. It's like almost removing through this abstract dimension of lines. It's very interesting to be quite honest with you. Um, so using our primitive object of a sphere, um, all we did is we added a noise effector. So just go to um, add effector and add noise. So, and at the beginning of the clip, we'll just make it so we change our noise amplitude. What is this? This is just like, it's distorting the object. So at the beginning of the clip, we'll just add a keyframe, move for three seconds, and then we'll change our noise amplitude to, I don't know, 1,400. Actually, we'll do more, it does about three. That's kind of cool to be honest with you. And here we have it. Um, over time, it just, it develops and, and it changes and creates all these interesting shapes, very abstract. And you can even scale it up even more to make it so it's more like an environment. Look at around 5,800, 5, there's like this environment of just lines in space. And we can keyframe it to make it so it's moving over time. You get the idea, there's a lot that you can do with it, so this is just kind of a basic overview of that. Alright, hold on. Okay, now on to the next. Hue, hue. So, um, here's our sample footage um, once again, and let's just take a look at it. It's this landscape, it's this um, girl walking through a forest. And this works really well because there's a lot of, the, co the colors are very coherent. So this is perfect for this effect. I didn't mention what effect we're copying. So, um, in DPR's video, we have, I think this is Ian, not Ian, um, live, just sitting on in front of a bookstore and the colors are changing. It creates an almost LSD type effect. This is a very easily achievable effect just um so if we have our sample footage and yeah it's just greenery and a girl walking very coherent colors so all we need to do is go to our effects and presets type in hue and then you'll get a hue and saturation drag that in and hit the keyframe button at the top left and starting with the master hue um we'll move forward i don't know to the end of our clip, however, whatever time span we want to go to, and make it two. So that means it's going to go through two full rotations of the color wheel within that time frame. And let's see how it looks. Very cool. So this is the LSD effect we're talking about. It's just creating colors, um, changing the colors and, and tones of the of the clip. There's not a lot to it. Um, but you get the idea, it's, it's very cool. So, next thing up is compositing. Compositing, it is, I mean, books can be written about compositing. It's, it's very difficult to do properly. Well, not really, but depending on what you want. In this clip, we're doing something very easy and that's what e, uh, DPR Ian does as well. So, and this is a clip of Cream just walking towards the beach, and we see this moon right there. Okay, that moon is huge. Obviously, it is not there, but it looks pretty realistic. I'd say, um, of being input in there through the effects, and that's what's called compositing. Um, so how do we achieve this? All right, so here is our sample footage. It's a similar clip. There's just a guy 
uh, walking towards these buildings, uh, open sky. So it was a perfect clip for inputting this random moon. So what you need to do is just go online and search up, find a random moon JPEG picture, uh, preferably a transparent background, so you wouldn't have to key out of the background or um, color grade it. Usually people will have green screens for um, bigger production projects, but for our purposes. So I have this moon and right. So there's my moon. It's just chilling, minding its own business right there. So that doesn't look very, I mean, that doesn't look very good. I, okay, by the way, I scaled it and positioned it to fit um, the top left, very easy to do. And that doesn't look very good though, does it? So we wanna make it so, like Ian's video, it's kind of fading out because you wouldn't see all the moon at the same time. So how do we do that? So we just go back to our moon JPEG and we're gonna add a mask. Going to the ellipse tool up here, we will just create a little mask around like that. That looks not too bad actually, but it's still not totally realistic. It's, it's not really fading into it, is it? So we go to open up our moon JPEG, go to mask, and then we'll add a feather. So let's add 500 pixels. That looks better because it looks like it's now fading. There's like clouds overtaking it possibly. Um, there's an obstruction to vision, which is much more realistic with how our atmosphere is. Um, okay, but it's looking at this clip, it's not entirely finished yet because it just doesn't look too real. Now, this is something to keep in mind when you're shooting the film. If you want to composite it later, you just need to pay attention to colors because you want the colors of your shot to match that of your the image you're inputting but um that can be achieved through color grading so i just added a magic look looks which is another plugin but it's just basically i added a black and white color correction to my footage and that looks really that looks great now it looks very real i mean it looks like there's just a huge moon it's very surreal it's 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 interesting and it creates an interesting atmosphere for the film that's how you do that. Okay, on to the next effect. All right. So this effect is turbulent displacement. So this is also creamy standing in front of beach and there's just like this thing in his piano that's distorting it. Well, that's called turbulent displacement. How do you achieve this effect? All right, once again, here's our sample footage. I had a simpler composition film where a guy is just um, in the center of the shot, except this one's moving. Not too big of an image, not too big of a problem. Um, all right, so how do we create that effect? So we're just gonna start by duplicating this footage and then we'll create a rounded, go to a rounded rectangular tool and create a mask around that. Then we'll go to mask. So let's just check what it looks like. So yeah, that's, that's what it looks like, it's just the guy. Okay, cool. Then we'll go type in to our effects and presets, turbulent displacement. And what setting is that used for? Um, I just left it as, as it was. And that's basically how you do it. Um, right, so the, the, this little portion of the, of the shot of the frame is distorted. And that's essentially how you do the effect. Not a lot to it. Um, you can play around with how much displacement you want, meaning how distorted is it gonna be. Um, but 50 is pretty good for our purposes. The complexity, meaning the changing of the contortions within. Um, you can animate it using keyframes to make it change, the distortion change over time. But I mean, the clip's already moving, so it's already kind of, um, it's, it already works pretty well. And that's that's how you do that effect. The last and last but not least effect we're gonna talk about is Element. Element 3D. So, okay. This is a tough one. This is definitely a tough one. But once again, it is a third party plugin and it's where he has live just 
sitting still um, with these boxes floating around um, him in creating a very cool effect and then these buildings appearing within the boxes overall very trippy very cool very very christian so um how do we create the specs and it's called element 3d so here's my sample my sample footage it's a guy just sitting still um in the middle kind of like copying the composition it's very futuristic looking with the with the modern architecture and so what we'll do is we'll just go to so this is a third party plugin like i said assuming you already have the effect we'll go to layer new solid let's just call it element 3d there we have it okay it's just black but let's just add element to it it's a video copilot um plugin kind of expensive but once again did not pay for that you know what it is um okay so we'll go to our scene setup then we'll go to create let's create a box so then we have our little little cube then we'll go to materials so um these materials come preloaded, but you can add your own you can create your own materials or buy new ones but for the purpose of this i think this is pretty good so um yeah we'll just have chrome chrome's box and that's what it looks like well that obviously isn't what we're that can't be the final product i mean look at it it's horrible we're not done yet. So we'll go scene setup, go to environment, and we want to create, um, an we want environment is basically how that 3D object is going to be affected by the surroundings. So the environment, I, I, ideally you'd be able to create your own environment, um, and you can do this, just search how to create your own environment um, in, in element 3D. And it's a process that has to take place outside the program. You, usually you might have like a 3D, um, a 360 degree camera. I don't have one personally. So we'll use the ones preloaded here and they might work pretty well considering how um, our shots shut, set up. So this one looks pretty good. It seems to be some kind of garage. Um, and let's just try it. Let's just see how it looks. We'll just hit okay. And cool, our sphere, our, um, I keep on saying sphere. Our box now has just more, it's more realistic because it interacts with the environment, so it changes throughout. So there we go, there's our box. Okay, it's still not done because it's just a box sitting there. We gotta change that. So what we're gonna do is go to group one, select particle replicator, and let's up that. We gotta make more boxes. So let's add like, oh shoot, wait. I need to play around with this a little bit more. Um, okay, effects. Scatter. All right. So basically what you want to do is go to the replicator effects and then hit scatter. Cause you want to create as many boxes as possible in different space, spread throughout space. And now, now we're cooking. Look at those, we got a lot of, we got a lot of boxes. So, and we can change the noise, changing, you know, where where they are and like creating movement. Let's just leave it as it is. I think it's fine. That would be good if you want to keyframe and animate a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> so, let's change the scale down to five because that's a little bit too much. And there we have it. There are our boxes. All right, so how do we... How do we animate it? Make it look a little bit more interesting. What we can do, I mean, there's there's plenty of things that you can do, and that's kind of the theme of this video is these are just effects that you get to play with yourself. There's no formula to them. It's something it's something that you have to create for yourself. All right, so um, let's just go to multi object, enable multi object. And there we have it. Now we can start doing some animations. So we can change the Y rotation over time. I'm not gonna actually do it because it's just kind of have an idea of how keyframes work by this time in this video. The displacement, the X and Y displacement, um, scattering throughout time so that we get some movement. And that, actually, that one actually, might, I might keyframe this one. This, this might look pretty cool, okay. So we'll just go to the beginning of our clip. 
scatter, displacement, go a few seconds up over time, move it. Yeah, that looks that looks gnarly. So I mean, you get an idea of how this works. Um, there's a lot you can do with it, and if in this shot, my shot is stationary, it's on a tripod. But if you um, if you moved, if the camera was moving, then all you need to do is do 3D camera tracking, which is um, you can find out how to do that online also. But you know what you're looking for: 3D camera tracking, Element 3D. There will be tutorials on it. I know there is. I've seen one. Um, and yeah, hey, that's the tutorial. Wow, 25 minutes. Hmm. I really killed the time on this one. Well, I hope that wasn't a waste of your time. I hope that you learned something. And if you have any questions on how to, you know, edit a little bit more like DPRE, and I want to do a series, I want to do more tutorials, because it's a process of teaching myself as well. Because um, I love his films. They're just very interesting, very good. So, if you're interested, just leave a comment and tell me what you'd like to see next. And if I didn't go over anything, if anything I went over was a little bit too vague, ambiguous, leave a comment. I will answer immediately. I promise you that because um, I am a very small channel. I have like, what is it, 300 subscribers, and that's from like five years ago. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, leave a comment and subscribe.